here at PL Wooden Exposed. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, and I am talking with some of the greatest Christian workers, and they are talking, sharing their testimonies as we give uh, accounts of what we see on a, uh, a weekly basis as we go to uh, an abortion clinic and fight for the lives of the unborn. Now, one of the brothers, Brother Lauren, uh, said that, uh, that one of the things that have encouraged him is the information that, that, we, that I give. And he said that there was a time when he only voted uh, one way, which was straight Democrat. And I want to speak to you about that because this is really not a Democrat or Republican issue, but at the same time, it is. Now, we're a church, and we understand the separation of church and state and all that. But let me, I want to read something to you. And if I get in trouble for reading the truth, then I'll just get in trouble for reading the truth. But according to the Democrat, Democrat, not Democratic, but the Democrat uh, Party platform, the Democrat Party platform says the Democratic Party strongly and unequivocally supports Roe v. Wade and a woman's right to make decisions regarding her pregnancy, including safe and legal abortions. Every time I read safe and legal abortions, I always wonder, safe for whom? Regardless of ability to pay, we oppose any and all efforts to weaken or undermine uh, that right. So based on this platform, they oppose uh, what we do every Saturday. Abortion is an intensely personal decision between a woman, her family, her doctor, her clergy, and there is no place for politicians or government to get in the way. Uh, this is uh, uh, what it states, and, it's, and it goes on to say, we also recognize that health care and education helps reduce the number of unintended pregnancies, thereby also reduce the need for abortions. We strongly and, uh, and unequivocally support a woman's decision to have a child by providing affordable health care and ensuring the availability of of and access to programs that help women during pregnancy after the birth of a child, including caring, uh, uh, caring adoption programs. This is uh, uh, their, uh, their pl platform. It also states support, uh, support rights to choose even if mother cannot pay. Now, this is interesting because they, they just said that the government shouldn't be involved but they support the government paying for the abortion. Because we believe in the privacy and equality of women, we stand proudly for a woman's right to choose consistent with Roe v. Wade and regardless of her ability to pay. So I guess then they'll have to use tax money, which is government intervention, which in the first paragraph they said that they weren't for government being involved. We stand firmly against Republican efforts to undermine that right. At the same time, we strongly support family planning and adoption incentives. Ado abortion should be safe, legal, uh, and rare. All right? Now, on the other hand, this is the uh, Republican Party's uh, a position on abortion. It says, faithful to the Self-evident truth enshrined in the Declaration of Independence. We assert the sanctity of human life and affirm that the unborn child has a fundamental individual right to life which cannot be infringed. We support a human life amendment to the Constitution and endorse legislation to make clear that the 14 Amendment's protections apply to uh, the unborn child. We oppose using public revenues to promote or perform abortion or fund organizations which perform or advocate, uh, advocate it and will not fund or subsidize health care which includes abortion coverage. We support the appointment of judges who respect tr uh, traditional family values and the sanctity of innocent human life. Uh, now you see the difference here in the platform. We oppose the non-consensual withholding and withdrawal of care 
or treatment, including food and water from people with disabilities, including newborns, as well as the elderly and infirm, uh, just as we oppose active and passive euthanasia and assisted suicide. So you see the differences in uh, the platforms. And what I have done here uh, in our services, we've, we've read the platforms and let people choose for themselves. If you can uh, read the Republican platform, and I, by the way, my friends, am a registered non-affiliate. I'm not a part of any party, uh, but I am uh, for unborn babies having a right to live. Yes. And, uh, and I, I will say this, as a born-again believer, I personally could not uh, affix my signature uh, to any party, whether it's Democrat or Republican, that has in its platform, in its platform, the support of the wholesale murder of the unborn. And I say to African Americans who are watching, it disproportionately affects us. We're targeted. The, the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Singer in, 19, uh, Sanger in 1939, wrote a letter to Dr. Clarence Gamble, and she said that blacks did not have the right to reproduction. The, these, these people are sinister. It's an it's a ungodly, heinous plan. And that should be crying in the community. That should be, as the Bible says, Rachel weeping for her children and could not be consoled consoled because they were not. Uh, there, is a, there is a slaughter taking place. And listen, in any society, you judge the worth and the value and the goodness of that society by how it treats its weakest and most vulnerable citizens. If this is true, then we live in a wicked society. Mm -hmm. For our most vulnerable citizens are being slaughtered, at least in the black community, to the tune of 1,876 children yes. per day. Reverend, doctor, pastor, bishop, superintendent, supervisor, church mother, evangelist, doctor, fireman, hey, soul brother number one or number two. We need your help. Yes, sir. We need you to organize. Yes. We know how to march as African Americans. You get us riled up and we'll shut down the streets. We'll, ch we'll shut down the train. We'll shut down the stoplights. We'll, we'll shut it all down. But we're just getting riled up over the wrong things. This is the slaughter. And we need your help. NAACP, withdraw your support for Planned Parenthood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. We need you. You're for the in, ad, advancement of colored people, not for the extermination That's good. That's good. of colored people. We need your help. I want to talk to a few more of the workers here. I'm I have with me, um, P.O. wouldn't expose today, some dynamic people. I'm honored to be in the presence of these people. I said one day, while standing at the clinic, being flanked uh, by some of the workers, uh, I, I've stood with bishops. I've stood with presiding bishops. I've, I've, I've met uh, uh, a president. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've been in the company of, of governors and mayors and People who seem to be somewhat. But I've never been more honored than to stand side by side with this group of people. There's, there's the, the camaraderie. I, I thought that nothing would match the camaraderie I used to feel when I played football, when we played sports. I was an offensive lineman. We have a lot of ex-football players and athletes on the team. And, and oh, man, down said hut, we'd move as, as one man. And, and we could communicate without even talking. And it was an amazing feeling. But nothing, nothing comes close to what comes over me, what I experience on the inside 
when I step up on the line in front of that clinic, and I'm standing, standing beside my brothers and my sisters, and we're out there, and we don't know for sure what's going to happen. We don't know whether we're going to get cussed out or shot. But, you know, we all have this thing. We're already dead. We're crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, we live. Amen. Christ lives in us. And we have each other's back. And we're praying for each other. It is an amazing thing. You need this in your church. You need this in your jurisdiction. And if you're African American and you're fighting and you're watching this, who are you waiting on? Waiting for the white man to come through yet again? No, we can do this. Do you not know, before I go back to my, these workers, do you not know that if blacks said no to the abortion industry, in this country, the abortion industry would cease to exist? I personally have no use. No camaraderie. I pray for them, but no, no, I have nothing in common with a politician who supports abortion. Amen. Especially an African American politician. My black brothers and sisters, those of us who are darker than blue, how do we support policies that eradicate our own? How do you do that? How do you sit behind the desk in your office that you've been elected to and you're supporting policies that exterminate your own? How do you get up, how do you get up and say, God bless America, God bless the United States of America, but you, su you support policies uh, that exterminate your own? How do you stand up and be proud and wear your garb and, uh, you know, give the soul brother a sign and... Uh, wear your kinta cloth and all the things that we do, but you support policies mm -hmm. that eradicate your own. How do you participate in Kwanzaa and say it's a black thing? How do you wear the earring in your ear and call that a black thing, yeah. Yeah. but you support policies that exterminate your own? Hey, man. Hey, woman. Hey, preacher. We need you. Brother? Yes, sir. One of the things that has motivated me to stand on the front line and to do this ministry is that I remember back in um, college when um, there was a, a young lady that I knew. Um, she was a Christian at the time, and she had gotten pregnant out of wedlock, and she already had a child. But she went in, and she got an abortion. And um, just two days later, she died from this procedure. Her son found her. And I, I think back, she was about 28 at the time. But in her mind, you know, I suppose that, you know, she didn't want nobody to know, didn't have anybody to talk to. But one of the, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm out there trying to spread the love is that you don't have to go through this. You know, you don't have to do it. You know, we're here to talk to you. And one of the things that, you know, that the, uh, uh, um, the escorts try to communicate is that we're the bad people. Right that we're, we're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is listening to, that, to this and that they're in the same situation, you can find help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, somebody will help you. And that's, all, that's the only, that's what we want to communicate today through this is that you don't have to go through this procedure and you don't have to fight alone because you're not alone. Thank you, sir. And your heart breaks for her. Mm -hmm. Your heart breaks because you hate that, that she lost her life. Um, and I, I, I don't think it could have been said any better than you just said it. We're not the bad ones. We're not angry. But your heart breaks for those who feel hopeless and helpless. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, uh, team. My angst is not with the people who show up to do it. They're in a bad way. They're in a bad place. You know, we, we fight to, to help them. Some of them are desperate. They're in a bad place. My, my anger, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, come from these policymakers and these people who benefit from these people. You know, we've talked about the escort. We've, we've talked about these workers. But every Saturday, 
uh, I, if my facts are correct, please tell me, but I think uh, the doctor drives down uh, from the D.C., Maryland area, and uh, he's a black guy, is that right? So he, he, he's the one that you, that you just get upset with. He's, in it. He, he's not in an emergency. He's not afraid. He's, he, he's, he's not uh, in a place. He's not in a crisis. He's cool, calm, and collected. He stopped on the way, filled up with gas, probably have a gas card from the company. Uh, they're paying for the mileage and everything else. Enjoyed a great breakfast, and he's driving down to perform these procedures. And people like him, to the tune of 1,876 babies per day. Who's next? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Bishop and everybody. I have a problem when people, abortion is murder. A woman has the right to choose what? To kill your baby. But in the, in the words of Martin, free at last, free at last. That unborn child cannot quote that. That unborn child does not know and it can experience life. That's the problem I have. To my fellow yokemen, come on the Lord's side and help us fight this good fight of faith. My name is Mel, and uh, <coughs> I um, have been going to the abortion clinic for a, a couple of years now, and I will never, forg never forget my first day there. I was not prepared, as other people have stated, of what to expect. Even though I was told certain things, it didn't prepare me for what I experienced. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against angels, against principalities, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I experienced evil presence that I've never experienced before. I have seen demons cast out. I've been in this church a long time, but I have never experienced the sheer murderous anger spirit that, that, that you can feel when you walk on the campus. Um, I have been told by workers to go out in the middle of the street so that a car can hit me. I have been by the abortion clinic escorts. I have been um, assaulted by the escorts. Uh, one tried to attempted to take the sign out of my hand, and when that, that didn't work, she pushed me with the sign. Um, I have been yelled at by those who are going in for abortions who have their minds made up. Most recently, one who drove from Elizabeth City. She was there before I got there. I got there at 8 o'clock in the morning. So she drove a long distance with her mind made up to go and kill her baby. And when I talked with her, she said, I already have four children and I'm not gonna carry this one. I said, ma'am, you're not a mother of four. You're a mother of five. You have five living children and you're making the decision to kill the one that you have, that, that your youngest baby. So I don't want you to think of yourself as a mother of four. You're a mother of five. Oh, did she hear you? Oh my, 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 how, how, how sad. Um, but what, what, what a fight, what, what an effort on your part mm -hmm. to, to save the life. And see, we, we, want, we want you to know that there's not all, there are not always happy endings. Right. You know, we could have, I could have just left the story there. But after all of that, she still um, ha had the abortion. This is why you are so needed. Truth is, despite our best efforts, we've never walked away uh, after Saturday's work, having a 100% record, mm -hmm. uh, having saved everybody we tried to reach. But for the one that we did, the ones that we have, they're playing now. They're, they're running around. They're, they're, they're alive. They, they may end up operating on all of us one day and saving our lives. And, and God knows. Mm -hmm. So we pray, we're putting this out, YouTube and various uh, areas and I pray that if you have it and you can pass it along to someone else, pass our conversations along. I know that they are rather lengthy. You may not be able to in one setting hear it all, but tell someone and listen to us and, 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 and come back and visit. Put us on pause, whatever you have to do. But when you're finished, if you happen to be one of those workers in the church where you're saying, I really don't have anything to do in my church. I've just, we've just given you something to do. And you, you're talking about fantastic work. 
you've heard the workers say that nothing prepares them uh, for the atmosphere, and it's true. Nothing does because you're going to a place that is literally, literally filled with demonic uh, spirits and presence because one of the things that demons in the underworld and in the dark world uh, hover around, that is the shedding mm -hmm. of innocent blood. All throughout the Bible, God warns against the shedding of innocent blood. The unborn is without active sin. A human being can, in, in the unborn state, is as pure as a human being will ever be. Before a human being can do either good or bad, right or wrong, in the unborn state. These, these are the human, this is the state of human that we're trying to uh, save. And, and isn't it amazing that in this country, we have eradicated so many humans in this um, pure state that it equals the population of at least five to six uh, states that make up, or five or six states on the West Coast, their populations combined. Over 55 million and counting since Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. yeah. California, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, you, Washington State, you begin to throw these states in. You had to put them all together to come up to 55 million persons. And yet, since Roe v. Wade, that many people are missing. What do you think would happen to the, for the people who are now drawing Social Security if all these people who have been eradicated were alive today and they had jobs and they were paying into the system? We'd have a lot more money to work with. Things would be better. Not all of the people would be... Uh, providers and, 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 and producers and contributors, but the majority of them would. And even if they're not, there is a sanctity and a dignity to human life. So I thank you for watching this episode of P.L. Wooden Exposed. I pray that we have challenged you. Pastors, leaders, community organizers, we need you. I'm a pastor. I pray that other pastors would rally in their churches. Mm -hmm. Get the people together. They'll do it. Lead them. They'll, they'll, they'll do it. One trip and it'll hook you. When the trip, when, the, when our experiences are over, we're tired. You experience a, a low for a while. It takes a while for your physical strength to come back because you've been battling demon spirits all day. But man, I'll tell you, it's worth the battle yes, sir. Yes, sir. if we can save yes. just one. Just one. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this peel wooden exposed moment. I thank you, O oh God, for these w mighty, mighty warriors for Christ. I thank you for every one of them and for what they do for the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray. We pray the prayer that the Lord Jesus told us to pray. Lord, you said the harvest is truly plenteous. You said it was plentiful, but the laborers are few. You told us, pray to the God of the harvest that he might send forth laborers to work in his harvest. Oh God of the harvest, please Jesus, send forth laborers to work in your harvest. It's not my harvest, Lord. It's not their harvest. God is your harvest. 
So we call on the God of the harvest. We ask you to send forth laborers. Touch that preacher who's watching. Touch that leader who's watching. Touch that man of God, that woman of God. Oh God, send forth laborers to work in your harvest. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we know that Saturday is coming. And God, we're gearing up now to be in place, to do our best. Please, Lord, anoint our efforts. Anoint us, Lord. Nothing happens without you, Lord, without your help, without your hand, without your anointing. We are fruitless. We are miserable. We are pathetic without you. But with you, we can reach some children. We can save the lives of unborn babies. We can touch children. We can save mothers. We can save our own. Oh, God. Now, we thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been watching P.L. Wooden Exposed.